What's up, Hyper Fast Nation? On this episode of the podcast, we take a special look at an update on the Lotus Domain Technology Fund. This was a fund I presented to a lot of my audience about six months ago. And on this update, we've got the founder of the company, Christian Mack, who's had a nine-figure exit before, along with Scott Ryan, who's helped raise over $150 million for this specific fund, as well as Tom Burns. Tom Burns has created a new vehicle to invest in this. The one we had available six months ago filled up. Just as a reminder, if you haven't watched the first episode we did with Scott Ryan and Christian Mack, make sure you go back to that episode, check it out. In this episode, you're going to get a lot of questions answered because you might think, you know, technology valuations are plummeting or have gone down in some cases. Is that good or bad for the Lotus Domain Fund? You're going to be surprised that it's actually helping them do better. They've already made one distribution. They're expecting to make another distribution in the oncoming or in the following quarter. So you're going to hear about that. Some of the companies that they are acquiring, some of the new hires they make. It's a terrific update. So stand by. All right, hey guys, Tom here. I've got Christian Mack and Scott Ryan with me. We're gonna get a Lotus update. It's short, it's sweet, and it's exciting. First thing, just for house cleaning, I wanna let you know that K1s are imminent, I'm told. So they ought to come hopefully, you know, today, this is a Thursday, they might even come as early as tomorrow. So as soon as we get those, we'll get them to, the, to our CPAs. And I'm told it's gonna be three to four weeks to get them out once my CPA gets it just to let you know so everybody gets that information. But here's the exciting stuff. I got Christian and Scott here. They're going to tell us what's been going on with Lotus, and a lot has happened. So this is exciting. And uh, I'm going to pass it off to one of you two first and let us know yep. what's going on with Lotus Fund 3. Thanks, Tom. We really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate your time and everyone listening to the podcast. Yeah, we have got some great news for existing investors and uh, maybe even some great news for potentially new investors. Just to do a quick recap, um, Lotus is a buyout growth tech fund. We're on our third fund. Fund one did really well, got about a 2.3 uh, return on capital in three years. Fund two was a 2.5 return on capital in four years, about a 36.5 net IRR in fund two. So really, really nice return. Our fund three, our goal was to raise 150 million and we've raised 165 million. So really exciting. Why is that? Well, we've got a really interesting asset class. We're basically a B2B um, software SaaS play. And, uh, and we're very recession resilient. So what does that mean? That means in today's climate with COVID, um, we're seeing really good valuations uh, and we're able to buy at really low valuations. Some of the best valuations we've seen in the last five years. We focus on collaboration software, automation software, things that do really well in this distributed work environment. Additionally, we do machine learning, AI, and some cybersecurity as well as some blockchain technology. We're, operation, we're operator oriented. And what that means is, the GP, we've all had multiple exits. Uh, there's six of us in the GP. We've invested 30 million of the 165 million that we've raised, which is a really big number because we're committed. And we, we, we think we have really strong value add. Um, we know how to pick out good people. That's existing management teams. We add value to those existing management teams by putting in a new CEO, taking the existing CEO and making him or her the CTO. Um, we identify strong products. They're normally in 10 to 15 Fortune 100 clients and they just need growth capital to expand. And then we come in and we add processes, our value add. It's a hundred day ramp up. And uh, our good friend Christian over here wrote a 300 page white paper on how to take a software company from five to 10 million, 10 to 20 and 20 to 50. And that's what he did. He sold his company at 50 million in revenue for a really strong nine figure exit. So that's the goal. Um, I, I would tell you that we've got some significant growth going on with the existing companies that we've purchased. Our second and third uh, investment is on a platform called uh, Kubernetes, and what you should take away from that is it's got about a 17% CAGR in today's climate, compounded annual growth rate, so really fast-growing businesses. These companies are also strong profit margins, about 90% profit margins, so we're very bullish on our ability to do our distribution. We're targeting a Q3 distribution, and we have an 8% PREF, so we'll pay a Q3 distribution of that 8% annual PREF, so likely around 2% in Q3 at the end of Q3, and then in Q4 at the end of Q4. So really excited about that. Uh, we've made some significant hires, and we've made some significant acquisitions, and I'm going to I'm let Christian speak to, uh, to both of those. 
So Christian, go ahead on, uh, why don't you talk about the new hires first? Yeah, well, thank, first of all, thanks again, Tom, for uh, for allowing us to do this update. Uh, excited, as always, to talk to you and, and the group in general. So we've got uh, two two more acquisitions uh, that we've done. So a, a, as of this point, we've done five investments. Uh, the two that uh, just recently wrapped up, uh, the first is Convox. It's a DevOps tool. It's a $15 million investment uh, that we're making uh, in that uh, particular area. It's a really exciting area because, quite frankly, uh, the particular uh, segment that this uh, company is in, it's around uh, 3 to $4 billion, uh, and, but it's also growing at around 25 to 30% year over year. Uh, and so this this company uh, has got uh, tremendous uh, technology uh, that's killing a lot of the big competition. Competition, quite frankly, that recently got acquired, a uh, competitor, by the way, that recently got acquired by Salesforce. And then Salesforce decided not to do any um, development on, on this product uh, post-acquisition. And this is going about a year ago. So there's a great kind of kill uh, kill this uh, product at Camp Keen. Which, uh, which Convox is doing, and they're getting a lot of uh, benefits from it. I just came from a board meeting there. Uh, and so we're, we're getting a lot of traction uh, with that. Uh, so we're really super excited. The, the CEO is actually an executive uh, from AWS uh, that, has, that has kind of taken the helm. Uh, so we're super excited about uh, him uh, and uh, the team that he's grown. AWS uh, the, uh, is Amazon, by the way. Yeah, Amazon Web Services, apologies. Um, the, the the next uh, is uh, Coinania. Coinania is a a Web 3.0 uh, strategy. So we've we've got about 11 million dollar investment uh, in that particular space. Um, you know, Web 3.0 blockchain. Uh, it's really kind of exciting uh, because Fortune 500 companies are using uh, this uh, to effectively redo a lot of their financial systems uh, because blockchain and Web 3.0 have a lot higher security than traditional. Uh, systems that were used uh, before, and it's growing uh, like like crazy. Uh, and so, you know, in this particular case, you're you're talking about 50 50 percent plus year over year uh, in terms of segment growth. Uh, this company is growing like, like growing like mad. Uh, we've got uh, you know a really great executive team, um, a person that I've actually personally known for for quite some time at the helm, uh, and uh, he's he's really killing it. Uh, he's actually above. Uh, his performa, his uh, budget, uh, you know, uh, and it's only been a couple months, which is uh, which is exciting. And so we're looking forward uh, to those uh, coming to full fruition uh, and uh, really kind of coming into their own here uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, well, I will say one thing I get asked a lot, uh, especially having come from the technology realm, uh, as, uh, of course, uh, Scott did as well. You know, how does this recent market really, really have affected things? And so, you know, I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, it's, as you guys may recall, uh, or for those who there are new uh, to this, uh, new to Lotus, uh, the, you know, one thing that, that uh, everyone should uh, be mindful of is that historically, uh, we've always bought in deals um, that you know have been off market, right? These these are not you know represented by brokers or anything like that. These companies are too small for private equity, uh, but they don't fit the venture capital model. But they're really good companies. Companies that are between five and ten million in revenue historically. Companies that are profitable, uh, and you know. They're not. They're not basically getting. They haven't t traditionally been sold just because they haven't reached that twenty million dollar revenue threshold. So we've got a really kind of sweet focus that allows us, post value add implementation, uh, to grow it into that to that realm. But before that, historically, we've always been buying companies for basically two to four times revenue, average being around three. Um, and that's a really low multiple. And the reason why we're buying it based on on revenues is because these companies have three to five year long contracts. They're profitable. And worst case scenario, in three to five year contracts with Fortune 500 companies, that's a big deal. Um, and historically, worst case scenario, the reason why you're paying for that kind of multiple is that you could always, um, you know, basically take the company and you know stop all development and so forth and so forth. And with like you know 80 percent, 90 percent gross margin, um, you know, you could you could make this very very profitable very quickly. Uh, but with like three, we'll call it three times revenue, that hasn't really changed. Um, and, you know, historically, private equity has typically sold for six to eight times revenue. Uh, and the public markets, uh, even after this correction, you know, are in the 10 plus you know, times revenue kind of range. So there's huge multiple expansion there. But what's really changed for us is the fact that there is a lot bigger, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot a greater number of, of deals uh, that, that we're looking at. Uh, and the deal quality is higher. Um, not that, you know, historically, we've always found really great deals uh, before. It took us a little bit longer to find, 
Um, but the actual multiple that we're buying at, um, the the price point that we get in, um, is uh, not really changed. Um, it's you know, uh, but there is a lot more of your uncertainty and doubt uh, in the market, uh, and so you know some of the more you know call it higher quality deals uh, are at our disposal, which is really exciting because obviously we've got a good amount of capital uh, that's waiting to be deployed uh, into this space. So, so you know, again, we're not uh, we're not worried about uh, the the public sector you know multiples uh, at all. If anything, uh, this is a great opportunity to really kind of uh, you know be selective uh, in with regards to. The, the the purchases that we have and you know ultimately speaking uh, we're going to be really consistent uh, with our strategy and our plan so anyway that's uh that's it for me hold that thought for a second did you know i've been involved in developing and building hundreds of homes and did you know that we take partner investors in our deals if you want to learn about new opportunities that we have for real estate investors go to my instagram account it's the dan lesniak and send me a direct message. Again, if you want to learn about my next opportunities for real estate investor partners, go to my Instagram at ddanlesniak and send me a direct message. Nice. Thanks so much. Um, and then two, two new hires that I think are worth um, talking about. Um, we've got, uh, for those who are new um, to the group, um, we had two gentlemen that we hired about six months ago. One is a gentleman named Ari Bass. Um, maybe speak a little bit of Ari's background, Christian, if you don't mind. Yeah, so Ari is a was a senior a partner uh, at the Deloitte. Uh, he has a master's of finance and accounting. Uh, he actually uh, before uh, before joining, uh, he had his own private equity uh, fund. Um, comes from the family office uh, world as well. Um, and uh, anyway, he's, uh, he's he's a person that I've known for uh, for ten years. Uh, and he uh, joined us and uh, is a, is the chair of our investment committee. So he is the one who is is in combination uh, with um, you know the technical and operations underwriting, doing all of the financial underwriting too, uh, which is great because it brings a lot of that, it brings all that rigor you know that you would see in a in a very very large private equity uh, fund uh, to bear. He also works with a gentleman named Josh Green, who uh, we brought on. Maybe speak a little bit to Josh Green's background, Christian. Yeah, Josh. Uh, again, I've known him for 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 many years. Um, he uh, used to be uh, Mike Milken's uh, CIO, uh, so uh, we're excited to have him on board. He's got a tremendous background in in technology as well as private equity, and uh, you know he's got uh, um, he's got a great track record uh, too uh, in that regard. So uh, so we're excited about having him, and he's uh, he's working with uh, Ari uh, in the on the investment committee. And we have Dan Chen, Yale grad. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, uh, so Dan uh, went to uh, Yale and uh, basically uh, went to work at Merrill, and then ultimately speaking, uh, went to work at uh, TPG. Uh, TPG is a uh, is a very large um, private equity firm uh, that's been around for quite some time, uh, and he was head of portfolio management uh, during the Great Recession. So he's very used to dealing with uh, you know not only enterprise uh, software companies, uh, but also you know situations that that are not are less than ideal. And so uh, after that, uh, he became a managing partner um, of a broker dealer um, out in Southern California, and he, he's joining us. So he's got all the compliance background and and things of that nature, and he's going to be head of our portfolio management. So this is a uh, this is a uh, you know uh, with Ari and Josh and Dan, it's it's uh, been a uh, we're scaling up um, you know quite well and uh, ready for uh, ready for a, a lot of uh, a lot of deal flow and and managing that those asset growth. Yeah, we finally uh, also brought on a gentleman in, uh, in 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 Tom's neck of the woods, a guy named Brett Paulson, who's out of Austin, Texas, who's going to be uh, officing inside the Capital Factory. The Capital Factory is an incubator that's invested in almost 600 companies, so they're going to be a huge conduit distribution channel for us for future acquisitions. Uh, Brett's one of the lead mentors at the Capital Factory. He joined our group. Um, he's been the CEO of multiple PE and venture-backed firms. He's had a multitude of exits. Uh, and then he's got a, uh, his undergrad was uh, computer engineering and electrical engineering from the University of Texas, Hookham Horns, and then he got his MBA at Stanford. So we got a lot of really strong talent, some incredible pedigree, and uh, we're really excited about our ability to not only uh, find new deals and acquire those, but to expand our existing portfolio and get maximized returns for our LP investors. So we're real excited about that. That's where we're at. Back to you, Tom. Man, so the Lotus team has been working and growing. So that's really exciting. That's great stuff. Um, now I know everybody's going to be really happy to get that information to find out how much exciting uh, activity has been going on. And Christian, thanks for for addressing the economic conditions and how it uh, has has less of an effect on on this particular asset class uh, because we do get those questions. So. Uh, I'm, I know I'm excited. I think everybody that gets this video is going to be excited. Uh, that's all I've got. Have you guys got any closing comments or do we 
shut it down and let people get this uh, great update. Yeah, I would just say reach out to uh, Tom if you're interested. I mean, look, to, you know, to Christian's point, um, what's happening is we're getting the same, you know, three to five times multiples, but we can still list at 10 to 12 times multiples. So the difference is, is we're seeing better quality deals at those low multiples. And that's really exciting because it means explosive growth for us. You know, our, our second investment that went public will likely be exiting in the next 30 months or so. So um, there's going to be some liquidity that, that's up and coming very quickly. And we also plan on doing a lot of IPOs next year. So I would say for those who are invested, now's a good time to feather up and increase your investment so you can get in before the uh, Q3 distribution. And for those who haven't gotten in yet, now's a great time to reach out to Tom and, uh, and get uh, your money in Lotus. We'd love for you to be part of the Lotus success train and fund three. Yeah, this has been a great ride. It's not going to be open forever. So if, uh, if you're not in and you're seeing this, uh, please give me a call. Give Scott Christian a call. We'll get you in. And uh, for those that are in, absolutely. Let's uh, get your get your money in because it's uh, it's going to start to multiply itself. All right, guys, thanks for your time and thanks for the great update. We'll see you next thank time. You. All right. Thank you, Christian, Scott and Tom. What an amazing update. It's exciting to see distributions already happen. If you want to invest, as you heard in the update, they're already oversubscribed. There may not be much room left, but remember, Tom Burns has created a new vehicle for people to invest. The old vehicle has already filled up, so there's room for some more people. If you want to get more information about investing, two ways you can do that. One is send me an email uh, at dan at danlesniak.com. Again, that is dan at danlesniak.com. You can also send me a text on my phone, 703 638 4393. Again, that's 703 638 4393. Thank you guys for the updates. And to all of our listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in. Please remember to share this episode with other people that you think would learn from the update. We'll see you next time.